Helen Brennan, it is such a joy to connect with you. Thank you for appearing on this special edition of Liberate Your Authentic Self. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me on, Andrea. It's, uh, it's wonderful to be here. Well, it has been such a treat to get to know you since we met in New York in the Catskills yeah. Mountains with the beautiful Brahma Kumaris and other people yeah. on this spiritual retreat, along with your, your lovely daughter, mm. Emma, the poet. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, but one of the things that was so awesome was to hear kind of conversation that you guys have a really special connection with animals. And we have some, some beautiful authors at Make Your Mark Global, um, mm -hmm. like Charlotte Banff, who you yes. have now connected with, and Miriam Thiels, yes. and Joanna Soares, another one of our authors. Mm -hmm. Like, I am, am now connected with people who can communicate with animals. They can hear what the animals are saying. They can um, help heal animals. Mm -hmm. And you are one of these people as well that has this really deep connection, so much mm -hmm. so that you've even channeled messages from, from animals mm -hmm. and put it into a song, which we're going to get into. But let me just start back with, when was the first time you felt this connection or did you feel it or did you just hear it? Tell me about how you communicate with animals. Um, I think when I was young, it was it was there. It was it was a natural um, passion that I was born with. And I used to dream about having I was only maybe three years old. And I can remember envisaging my uh, grandmother's house as this um full of animals and we were caring for them, you know. And I, so I think that passion was there from being really young. Um, but then as you grow up and you're told, you know, you're just sensitive or you're, you know, you, I think I just shut that down because to feel that connected to animals and have so much empathy for them wasn't, um, it wasn't sort of acceptable. It, it wasn't unacceptable, but it just wasn't brought forward. Um, but I think that in the period that it really began to, awaken up again in me was um it, it started as I did more therapy work with horses I was training as a body worker and I was doing a lot of hands-on therapy with horses that were um traumatized or had behavioral issues so my hands were doing a lot more connecting with them and visually I was doing a lot more observation of how they were moving and how were they trying to connect with me through body language but then I had um, I lost a child in 2012, and it was then that it really it just went into a different dimension, a different level of connection and communication. So it had gone from sort of communicating about the physicality and their physical needs into this uh, phenomenal wisdom where they started to. Um, really sort of teach me how to navigate life and that was really the start of realizing that there was a greater purpose to their lives um and, and my own but I, I began to um realize that there was so much more um and and that was sort of changed the whole direction of my you know of life my life and my whole family's life, really. So, so, yeah, it was so does that mean that from childhood up until mm -hmm. adulthood, that that connection that, that you felt, it was really turned down? All yeah, the way to definitely. Life? Wow. Yeah. It was, the, the love was there, the empathy was there, and the, the connection, you know, there was like a magnetism between me and animals, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. there wasn't the communication. The, the, whereas now I can hear it, feel it, see it, it's very... It's on all sort of levels. It wow. it comes through. Um, whereas then during that period, um, I think because people would say, "Oh God, she's soft. She's this. She's." Mm. If I came forward with anything that I, I wanted to share, that I think I just shut down yeah. speaking. Uh, and I think that happened then on so many levels. Then in in life, I think I just it became easier to just not speak. Yeah, really. Um, and that's, unfortunately, that's what so many of us yes, as yes, high yeah. sensory processing individuals, yeah. we tune into mm -hmm. energy and the feelings mm -hmm. and the 
the vibe yes. of, of uh, yeah. environments or people and mm -hmm. we're told yes. that we're sensitive or, or yeah. too soft or just too yeah. much, too whatever. Mm -hmm. And like you, I mm -hmm. shut down those abilities yeah. for a while. And yeah. unfortunately, mm -hmm. it makes a lot of us feel like we're bad or we're wrong or we're yes. weirdos yeah. or freaks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do. I think that feeling bad and the shame. And that was the first thing that once they, I think once I was in a place of grief, so I couldn't really... I wasn't in the past and the future. I was just, I was just getting through each day, and I was present. They were able to really connect yeah. into that place. And then the first thing was shame because I felt shameful about so many things, oh, wow. and it, it was crazy because they weren't bad things. But I, that is just, I think, how I'd interpreted it for for so long that you carry shame for saying maybe what you think or what you feel or. Um, and they started to teach me on the physical level of how emotions are information. Yeah. So they didn't do it as good or bad. So they were amazing therapists for me at the time because it was there was no words as such. It was um, I was experiencing the whole thing, and then I began to learn how to navigate emotions that would rise, you know, in the future. So it was quite amazing that a creature with no voice could teach me so eloquently how to navigate all what was going on inside. And uh, in that was such a blessing and I felt so humbled that I felt blissful even in grief. So it was like being on both ends of the spectrum, you know, at the same time it was it was heartbreaking but beautiful and and you know I realized that this child had come to get me to listen you know and teach me to listen to my own heart again so I knew I was gifted really in that I was being gifted the the experience yeah well yeah. Each, each of us are souls yeah. and so if you and that precious soul have this agreement that I'm going to teach yeah. you Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, I mean, I've got chills just thinking yeah. of and saying it, but what mm -hmm. a deep gift mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. is, because now you're able to experience that in your own life, yeah. but you're paying it forward. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. you know, one of the things that brought us together just mm -hmm. last week yes. <laughs> or over the weekend <laughs> and, yeah. was this sense of urgency that you're mm -hmm. feeling yeah. in sharing the voice of the animals. So, Helen, this is probably the worst part of the interview for me mm -hmm, yeah. um, because we're both so sensitive, so we'll both end up crying. Yeah. But it's really, right. it's really hard to even imagine that mm -hmm. with these fires, there are animals that are still suffering. Um, yeah. You mentioned mm -hmm. to me that people can actually hear them howling and crying. Mm -hmm. right. we, yeah. we, there's still a desperate need, right? Definitely, yeah. I mean, there's the the charities and the workers that are going out there at daily to try and rescue animals. You know, firstly, I mean, for them to just hear animals crying out in pain, they've lost their, you know, their families. These the, the animals, they've no food, you know, no water. They're burnt, you know, and you know, it's like a human being suffering from trauma. It's no different, you know. They desperately need the support and you know me sitting here in the UK I I if I didn't have all these animals here to care for I think I'd be out there trying to support them you know they need that nurture that the people need the, the money that's the least and that's all I can do while I'm here in the UK is try and raise money so that those workers can get out to the animals and get them back into some kind of safety um, and it's heartbreaking to see some of these babies that have been that have lost the, the, the you know their mothers and um, you know the the little families um, you know have been wiped out so yeah if people can donate that would be just just amazing you know because you are helping you know uh, the workers get out there with the um, things that they need uh, to get that support for them yeah. so thank you absolutely everyone. so we're all you know certainly praying we're envisioning rain mm -hmm. drenching the land mm -hmm. but we've also mm -hmm. got to you know, use that compassion and click the button to donate yeah. so that yeah. these workers can get mm -hmm. 
the resources get they need there. to yeah. get yeah. to these animals. To them. Yeah, to get them and get them out because some haven't got the strength to get out. You know, they've, they've been sort of burnt, half burnt or, you know, intoxicated with the fumes or whatever and, um, you know, are, are traumatized. So, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm so grateful. Are. So grateful that you reached out when you did and, thank you. and that we could take action quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. And thank you for doing this today, Andrea, for them. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I only just found that out in the last couple of days. They don't even get paid for that. And then I found out about what's actually going on with the water and they're controlling the water now. You know, they're selling off the dams. And so what they're doing with the water in Australia is horrendous for the people. And so that is another thing I think, wow. oh, God, you know, what are we doing? What are the governments doing to the people? And um, well, one of the messages... That's something that I've never heard of. Yeah, there's um and the, it was in America as well. I I, I saw this article about um the very big rich um I don't know who they are are buying up the water, so they're they're starting to control that. Um, it, and I think it you know because obviously the changes and I'm I'm like this is crazy, you know. Um, so uh, one of the things the animals have been saying to me a lot, and it might just be here, and I don't know, and I always share it, is that they. They impress upon me their self-sufficiency. So mm. this year, I mean, I, I am doing the growing because I, I saw the vision of this very peaceful place and, you know, bringing the hedges in was bringing back the, um, you know, the, the insects and the butterflies and, and the wildlife. Um, but they, they have impressed upon me to grow. And I'm not really a grower. I'm an animal carer. <laughs> so I was a bit resistant. But but. I, I, I am going to commit to that this year. But I did see us feeding people that came. It was very simple food, but it was grown organically here. And um, I said to Matthew, you know, whatever's coming or whatever's going to happen, you know, it was just, I just have to have complete faith that our needs will be met because I know I have to do this and take, because they said to me, take a risk on us, take a risk on us. So, that's what this year is a risk. <laughs> I'm, I'm praying, Andrea. You know, I know. I'm following following that, and uh, I'll do what I can. Yeah, hopefully. So. Well, you have our support as well. Yeah, whatever Thank we you. can do to to share the the word, yeah. we will do it. Yeah. Thank you so much. And um, uh, Patricia was, um, I told Patricia about you and your love for the animals, and she w would love to connect at some point because she'd love to share the greater message. Her awakening was through the animals, and uh, she feels one of her jobs is to help them out of suffering. Yeah. So she said she'll help in any way um, with the animals. Awesome. <laughs> We're all coming together, aren't we? And that's what, it, that's what we have to do, one family, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, one of the things that you shared with me after we met was you shared this song with me and my mm -hmm. daughter, and I remember the first time I listened to it, I was like, first of all, who is singing this angelic voice, which I now know is this <laughs> lovely woman named Amber. But the, the, the lyrics are so powerful. Radiate the most powerful and shine with love. So sing a song. Picture our love, awaken your hearts to the man that we call love so sing a song picture as bright beating away day and day everything's And you explained to me that you channeled pages mm -hmm. and pages. Mm -hmm. So tell me, where were you? Where does that fit um, of you receiving these lyrics uh, on your timeline? What year was that? That was uh, 2018. 
uh, and it was a Sunday. It was a beautiful, beautiful day, and I was I w- the horses were out in the field, and I was just doing the jobs, and I just felt them call. It, sometimes it's really strong, and I can just feel that there's something to share. And as I popped my head round the corner, they were in a, an arc that all come. So I thought, wow, uh, I'll get the pad out. And normally I write, not I don't write poet. I have written the odd bit of poetry before, uh, you know, but but mainly it was it would just come in blocks of of text, whatever they wanted to share. Um, and as I start to write, I could see there was a different rhythm. It was there was a rhythm to the to the words, and then there was a silence. It was eerie. They were like statues. I mean, then they are when they heal or when they work with people. They do hold this stillness, which is is very different from when they're just being horses and and doing the usual stuff. And I looked around, and then I read the words back, and I cried because. I, I knew this was a mess. They knew that we were going to lose a lot of animals on Earth. And I found that really hard to take because I thought life without animals, for me, life, the Earth without animals. Um, so that, it was a very emotional day. And your mind runs with, you know, um, because that day I hadn't actually pictured it. I had written it and then felt that felt the loss um so that had happened and then I said I, I, I said to Amber is this a song Amber and uh, she said yeah yeah and then the band they said oh we want to bring it to life we want to give the horses a voice but what I realized when I even though it was through the horses that I wrote it was it was on behalf of the animals as a collective this wasn't just they were sharing with us a message that they're trying to warn us and they're also saying they're in this state of forgiveness towards humanity all the time and that when we start to see really see what's going on um that they are still beside us you know they're still walking beside us and um the 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 whole theme of the song was we're going to fly home as one flock and that i think was what really pulled my heart you know so when this happened with the fires and we saw all these animals dying um i just sort of knew this is the start of this message that they are trying to share with with us with humanity um well i'm so, so we're trying to do some good with it hopefully yeah. raise some money for them and it has been it has been challenging for all of us as mm-hmm. uh, people who are tuned yeah. in to mother earth and tuned oh. into animals yeah. we feel their suffering you know our yeah. our very sensitive hearts as yes. empaths yeah. are really yeah. pulled when there's yeah. this kind of tragedy uh, at mm-hmm. this scale with the the fires yeah. first in the amazon and now these oh, fires everywhere. in australia yeah. it's and everywhere i mean there's other yeah. disasters that happen yeah. so do you find that you hear from the animals on a daily basis and then also tell us like now you have a, a mm-hmm. facility where people mm-hmm. can come and interact with your horses. Yes. Um, so yes. tell me, how does that work? Um, well, yeah, I hear all everything now communicates. Um, it, it was just obviously it was mainly the horses to begin with. Then it was all animals. Then it was then it ex, it just is constant expansion. And I, I'm always in this learning state. I know I'm always learning. And recently, although I, I was always connected to nature and the trees. Um, I was reading a book called Earth Speaks Up and that um, the earth is speaking to the the author, uh, Mary McKinney, and asks for help at this time. So what I started to do was bring in her exercises that she does with earth in the meditations that I do with the herd. And that has been a really powerful combination, bringing earth in. You know, and are I those do, meditations you're doing by yourself or you're allowing other people to be? Yeah, other people can come. Uh, we do connect up with people, uh, you know, around the world as well. You know, other people who maybe want to join in on that energy. Um, and last year was very much a year where we worked with people individually. So people came and they would uh, just have, we, we call it equine inspired healing because it was all inspired by the herd. And People will come for experiences on different levels. Some it might be, you know, just a trauma, or, or somebody might want to um, expand into other levels of consciousness and and 
or really find out who they are, you know, and it's a safe, sacred space where that can be allowed to just organically awaken. But this year, I feel the horses are really, really wanting to sort of expand the meditations because they can work with so many of us on so many levels all at once. You know, I think they're wanting to reach more people and bring people back to the land and and that gratitude for for everything that we've been given and and sort of expand on that you know so to me this is this is so fascinating um yeah. i think it was probably about 15 16 years ago that i yeah. first was introduced to equine therapy for people mm-hmm. dealing with addiction and eating disorders oh, yes. um, yeah. i spent a lot of time uh, in my medical career treating oh, people with trauma yeah. and addiction and eating disorders yeah. And so working at some of these treatment facilities where people Mm -hmm. could go into the equine therapy, the thing that I always heard was that people would walk in Mm -hmm. and if they felt a connection with the horse, Mm -hmm. they Mm -hmm. felt seen, they felt understood, and they felt zero judgment. And it was like someone who's actually seeing me, witnessing me. Without yes. judgment, like th- I remember this one woman saying, it's like they could see through all my defenses and all of my pain, yes. Yes. just down to the precious inner child. Yes. And yes. so I, I find that this that that horses in particular as healers, mm-hmm. it's like mm-hmm. magical, like this soul yes. connection. I, I'm so fascinated yes. by it. Yeah, well, it is. And the judgment, I think, is the the most beautiful thing because that is how they work with with each individual there's no judgment no matter how much we perceive it or judge each ourselves or others there's the once you step into that environment with them no matter what has gone on they just don't judge it as as good or bad but what they do teach us is um how to navigate all the emotions that 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 rise and they show through the herd interactions as well how they deal with that and how they soothe one another and one of the things I've learned recently is um, how the nervous system releases trauma and it's in the present moment when it feels safe and soothed and so I sort of really understand more now why people can let go with the horses because they feel safe they are soothed they're not judged and um, they the horses won't work with them till they are present they bring them into the present moment and that I think is the most phenomenal thing when I watch just how they bring us into the present moment and and very similarly one of the first ladies that came to us had an experience just like you mentioned they she'd had a lot of different therapy over the years and she said it's as if they just went in right to the core of it and pulled it to the surface and then she sort of observed, she realized where her trauma began and then was able to start to work through that and uh, let it go. Yeah. They're fa- they are phenomenal. <laughs> well, I love it. And I love that we were yeah. able to come together and, yeah. and bring this beautiful song mm-hmm. to the world yes. In, yes. in a way that we are praying will help yes. with the wildlife mm-hmm. efforts Definitely. and helping the yeah. animals that have been affected mm-hmm. in Australia. So I yeah. will share the link for people to go to the Just Giving yes. page and every donation goes straight to the Wires um, charity, mm-hmm. which helps with mm-hmm. wildlife in Australia. Mm-hmm. So what is on the horizon for you? You have this center. So people, you're not just taking people in England. Anyone could mm-hmm. fly there and have an yes. experience. Yeah. Yes, yeah. We, we hope to, this year we really hope to, um, we want to bring as much, and we were only small, um, we only have a, a small amount of land, but we want to bring more um, uh, wildlife back in. So we're going to do a year of sort of planting and growing, um, which is really important to us. And we want to expand on doing the sort of meditative experiences, maybe do do something more as a retreat so people can come, um, you know, eat nice food enjoy the silence you know connect back to earth and um there's some beautiful walks as well in the area so just to combine all that and find that peace again and um get back to 
to who you really are. I love it. Well, I think it would be beautiful if you would share your story in our upcoming book about holistic healing, where we have different oh, authors yes. sharing stories yes. about how they oh, healed, not just with traditional yes. therapy, but I think yes. what you're describing, this connection to animals, yes. this connection to the earth, yes. is a form of holistic mm -hmm. healing. It sets us on that path. Yeah, yeah. Well, it is, a, it is beautiful, and thank you. I'd, I mean, I'd love to share the story because I think the greater sort of message the animals have got for us all is to, and, and we can trust them. You know, nature and the animals just don't lie. And when we're drawn back into that space, we find such a truth. It, it becomes uh, something that is unshakable and it helps navigate our lives in a really pure way where we connect and we appreciate each other. So uh, that will be so beautiful. Thank you. Um, you know, I think they do. I think the animals are calling us back home. <laughs> Well, I, I do love that that lyric in the song that says, we are one flock and we will flock. return yes. together yes. Um, yes. as souls. Yes. That's what we are. We are, yes. we are all yes. this we are. part of this family. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And it's a beautiful family, isn't it? And we can, yes. and I think the animals see that we miss out so much when we get distracted and, and you know, so, so trapped in the material world and, and um you know, for me, certainly, they've just brought, they've opened up, well, they've, I think, and I might have said this to you last time we chatted, that at yoga, they, this lady started a poem, and it said, uh, I don't want to live an unlived life. And I think if I hadn't have had this experience, I would have lived an unlived life. Whereas now I feel that it's, I'm living. Yes. Thanks to them. <laughs> Living and fully integrated, like really oh, now yeah. able to use your gifts of yes. sensitivity in a way that is not only healing you, yes. but is healing the planet. Yes, yes what definitely. Gift. I think the planet's calling out for us, isn't she? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Helen, thank you so mm -hmm. much. I am, I'm so grateful oh, to you, you and so thank excited to, to see what comes of our collaborations and also with your daughter. Yeah doing some yes. Oh, yes. spoken yes. word poetry for yes. our new record label. Um, just yeah, that's fantastic. So much gratitude yeah. for you and the beautiful work that you're doing. Oh, thank you. And same uh, to you and Sienna as well and to all the animals. Yes. Thank you. So there you have it, my friends. You can get a copy of the song called Sing Our Song that Helen has channeled from the animals. It's sung by Amber. What is her last name? Sorry. Uh, Lane McIver, Amber Lane McIver. Lane McIver and her band, yeah. Ambier. You can check the link. You can get a download of it when you donate to help the wildlife in Australia. Until we meet again, remember my friend, you are a gift to the world. So share your presence with passion. Much love. Bye.